All right. My goodness. We are live. I'm just getting things kind of organized here. <laughs> so many little parts and pieces. I'm always um, I'm always a little, maybe a teensy bit. Hi, Lisa. I think I'm still a teensy bit like overwhelmed by navigating all the little goodies here. Anyway, um, welcome everybody. I, I have no idea how many of you will actually be here for this live event, but hello, even if you're, um, even if you're catching the replay. So um, yeah, here's, here's kind of what we're up to today. I was calling this uh, Six Sacred Secrets to Customize Your Diet. And, you know, I, I want to say a few things about that because I feel like this is a really special topic. It's, um, it's one that I really appreciate um, kind of navigating and offering and and I've been doing this for many, many, many years. And what I started to see over um, over the time, over the years, <laughs> is that it's something that I can offer. It's it's like just a little something that has um, been an innate ability, maybe I could call it that. And uh, so that's what we're working on today. And, and I think that this time right now is especially potent because we're in a major shift, right? Like nobody's going to deny that we're in a major shift. And I know, you know, so many of my clients, um, so many people in general, it, it's a lot of times like you might, you kind of know, you have a general idea of what what you want to be doing or what you should be doing, but maybe you're not doing it. But then there's the other piece of, of looking outside um, and getting caught up in like reading the latest books and getting into the latest whatever, fads, trends, uh, keto, but you know, we, the list can go on, right? Um, and I, and I, this is really going to focus on this next level. Um, I think that because we're in this dramatically different time period and, um, and hopefully, gosh, as I'm rambling on, hopefully you all are uh, even hearing me. <laughs> somebody's, if somebody's there, just kind of thumbs up or type in or something like that. But, um, but this is, this is a time where we're being, I think, called to up level and and I think as well, there's like an awakening, right? There's like this awakening to, oh my gosh, what really matters? And an awakening, I even feel like more of a connection to uh, like what I would call the non-tangible communication. Okay, I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole. <laughs> um, but I think it's kind of interesting um, that hi Celeste, and, uh, and hopefully you all you all are hearing me. Yeah, I just, you know, type a little something in in the chat. Um, hopefully, you know, with uh, so five, five G's right coming out. I'm not going to talk too much about that. This is not what this is about. But 5G is kind of, I'm trying to see it as like, how do I work with this thing that I, I'm ultimately kind of not super thrilled about? Um, but how do we work with it? So this is adding a level of like another dimension of communication. Okay. So how do we utilize that with communication with ourselves? And uh, maybe we're even communicating with the divine more closely. So anyway, that's kind of what we're looking at today. And, um, and this is really going to be 
about navigating your own um, your own landscape and just yeah just kind of seeing seeing what's going to best serve you and i'm also going to be sharing kind of like a nice a fun little surprise that i have uh that i'm very excited about something new um hello maria so i'm just going to type in uh real quick just make sure because i don't see anybody that's replied that they can hear me so hopefully I'm not rambling on. Uh, anyhow, we're going to talk about these secrets and I am calling them six sacred secrets because of this next level, right? And let's just dive right in. Obviously, if you have questions um, as they come up, you can type them in. I'm going to try to keep an eye there uh, on what comes up, but uh, you know, things can get lost in the shuffle too. Cool. All right. So let's go in and what I'm going to ask of you as we go through this time together is I'm going to be relaying, you know, sort of my experience and and things like that in working with people around this. And I'm going to put an interesting spin on it today, too. I'm going to give it a little little flavor, a little juice. Um, so we're just going to dive into secret number one and secret number one is clarifying what you love and what you value. Okay. And this is what I call your, your why, like, what do you love? What do you value? And then that translates into your why, because honestly, the actions that we take, the especially daily actions, something when we're talking about um, when we're talking about food and nutrition, for sure, but also when we're talking about the daily things that we do, the things that we do day to day, they really are uh, often sure there are things we have to do, but they're about what we love and value, and certainly where you spend money. And um, that's a really good indicator. Uh, and it's and it's just what what's that motivation from like a from like I'm really interested in it and it and it draws me in. Now, some of you, not all of you, know that I have um, also been integrating life path astrology into my work more recently. And this is going to relate to your Venus and also your North node. So anybody that kind of knows a little bit about that. Um, but this is where I'm going to ask of you, like, what is your bigger why? What, what do you love? What do you value? Is it, you know, is that bigger why being of service? Is it to be an example? Um, is it to have the energy clarity? You know inner and outer alignment to be of impact and maybe it's just to you know be able to engage in your life for decades to come um i think we're all you know because things are shifting so much like this is a time when i kind of feel like you want to be on your game right i don't know i want to be on my game <laughs> i know that for sure uh it, perhaps you want to have health and vitality and be active into your 90s right um, and it may be as simple, honestly, like getting real with yourself about what you love and value. And this is where I love looking at the ast astrological chart because we see where that planetary influence lands and you're like, oh, you know, maybe it's about revving up your, maybe, maybe what juices you up is the idea of like revving up your love life. So that means being healthy, right? And being, <laughs> um, or perhaps it has to do with, you know, fitting into an item of clothing. Uh, perhaps, like I said, maybe it's like being of a bigger impact. So that's, it's, it's, a, it's a really fascinating lens for us to look at and something that I support uh, my clients in clarifying more deeply. Um, but right now, what I invite you to do is to tune in 
and and just let yourself feel it rather than think it especially those of you who have a little more of the airy tendency of getting up in your head um that you just give yourself an opportunity to feel into and even ask yourself gosh what were the what were the last things that i spent money on <laughs> what you know what do i find myself interested in and then that can be a kind of a guidepost for you in um, navigating as we go more into some of these other aspects around what is your customization for yourself. And a lot of what I'm talking about here today is going to be both to decode that for, for yourself and get a deeper understanding of you and what's going to serve you. But at the same time, it's it's going to um, keep you on track to like hopefully get a little more of an idea of of what are those little niggly things that take you off right all right so that's secret number one and i didn't say it at the beginning but if you have some pen and paper for sure write that down for yourself just write down what's coming up right here and now um and then that can be a further exploration for sure Number two is to decode your cravings. I love this. I like, I think there's so much wisdom in what we crave. And I'm talking about food, but I'm also talking about uh, other types of cravings. Okay. And this is where I look at yin and yang balance. A lot of you know I teach yin yoga and I talk a lot about yin and yang balance. Well, th this is about your body is always, always seeking balance. So you might think that why, you know, oh, my, my, my body has it out for me because it keeps wanting coffee in the morning, right? Like it, Granted, coffee is addictive. So if you've gotten in the cycle of drinking coffee, there's also an addiction there. Okay. Um, but I'll even, I'll use an example of uh, wine at night, like that craving for wine. It, I'm not talking about an alcoholic, um, but that craving for wine, seeking that relaxation, that comfort, that ability to check out a little bit. Now that's your body looking for balance, craving sugar, body looking for balance. Um, so just some, some uh, ideas here are that maybe the crate, like these are like non-food, like craving touch, craving rest. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's going on there, right? Like um, craving alcohol, uh, having the need to kind of numb out. I see all of these as ways that it's more of a non food. And then we have, we have more like food aspects, which would be craving caffeine, the something that's going to give me an energy boost, which I would include sugar in that um, craving, you know, ice cream, um, craving salty chips, crunchy, salty chips, these are all giving us information. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the yin and yang balance that comes into here. And I, you know, I, I definitely don't have time to go into all the nuances of yin and yang because it's pretty big. Um, but I just, I want to put kind of like a simplistic spin on it. And, um, and of course I, you know, I go deeper with this in a lot of, the work that I do, but, um, but hopefully I'll also continue um, offering out some little tidbits about this. And certainly in my yin yoga, I talk a lot about it. Um, so there's, there's stress, meat, salt, caffeine, 
heat, anger, fear, anxiety, muscular tension. These are all great examples of things that are contractive and young, okay? Um, and that, these tend to be what's more dominant, tend to be. Now, am I saying that don't have them, what, you know, all that, I mean, muscular tension, it's not something that you take, <laughs> something you experience. However, um, if you're stressed, if you're maybe eating a lot of meat, a lot of salt, having a lot of caffeine, and you're feeling angry, fearful, anxiety, you know, anxious, having muscular tension, uh, feeling overheated, overstressed. These are ways in which you get a clue. Oh, I might need a little more yin. And how can you do that? So I'm going to give you some examples of less healthy yin balancers because these are a lot of times where the ping pong happens. Um, so what I would consider less healthy yin cravings would be like sugar, dairy, um, especially like cold, creamy, sweet dairy, <laughs> ice cream, uh, alcohol, marijuana, um, and and I cold, so cold is a little more yin. So you might be finding yourself craving that cold. Also overeating is a way of like yinning out. You know, you kind of like get yourself filled up. Um, yinning out, uh, numbing out, I mentioned that already. And these are all clues. Okay, I'm seeking balance. So what do you do? What do you do instead you start to, get, and this is part of that blueprint, getting an understanding of what your tendencies are. Now, I'll just use uh, an example. For myself, I tend to um, be a little, like kind of a little more high energy, right? And I can be prone to holding tension in my body. Um, these are just a couple of examples. And so I really try to focus on a lot of what I would call yin foods. And I find um, healthy yin foods, okay? Healthy yin foods that I require. Now, in the winter, that might change. I mean, it does change. <laughs> it does. In the winter, I may need a little more yang. You know, it just depends. And this is where from moment to moment, day by day, you can use these little clues to see what do I need. So, okay, let's use the example of overly young because I feel like a lot of people are uh, are going towards sugar. I, I didn't say like, like flour products too. Those are yin, like fluffy, <laughs> fluffy flour products, definitely yin. Um, but during this time, this is stressful. There's a lot of like, stress is heightened. So I almost feel like the call for yin is going to be ultra important right now, and maybe a little bit more so. But see for yourself, maybe you're the opposite right now. Maybe you need more yang. Um, but introducing more of the healthy yin regularly, if you're finding yourself craving the above. What are those? Water rich foods, it's juicy, and this is the perfect, it's summer. So this is like, and this is a young time of year. So like juicy fruits, sweet and non-sweet, you know, non-sweet are gonna be cucumbers, tomatoes, things like that. Uh, the sweet ones are going to be those sweet, juicy, hydrating fruits, grapes. Um, what are some of my favorites? Mangoes, really good. Um, and coconut can be good, even though we wouldn't consider that necessarily like a sweet, juicy one. Um, that has kind of a yinifying effect. And the, if you're doing su some sweet fruits, because I know fruit can get a bad rap. It can totally, melon, another great example, um, can get kind of a bad rap. And I, unless you really are sensitive and that's something I, you know, I look at with my private clients, like super, super sensitive and we do need to do something. I kind of say like, you know, 
this is not, this fruit is not a bad thing. Okay. It has, because for one thing, it's going to satisfy you with the sugar. Now, if you're not active, you may not want to have as much, um, or just watch, you know, how much, how much, how much sugar, all of that. But I still feel like there's valuable vitamins and minerals, and it's such a different form of sugar. And it's so, I think I had, what, what did I, um, on Monday when I did uh, our meditation, I said like, who, like who's not happy? Like when you're, when you're eating like a ripe melon on a hot summer day, like there's just something so delicious about that. It's not, um, and so richly satisfying that goes beyond some of the other, you know, some of the other things that we might choose. I guess you could probably feel that way about ice cream too. <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm saying like when you know, and I'm not, you know, I, I actually like to have ice cream every now and again, it's sort of my guilty pleasure. Um, but there are other ways to customize this. And if you're feeling yin deprived, it can be a really good place to go. Um, hydration in general, yin yoga is gonna be great deep breathing, nature time. Um, and I think something that's gonna bring more balance is being more focused on plants, you know, just in general, because there's such a wide variety. And then we figure out what are some of the other parts and pieces that need to come in. Smoothies are gonna be really uh, unifying, fresh juices, um, creamy foods too. So avocado, coconut, things like that. Creamy, again, like sort of healthier versions. And um, I, I always use the example of ice cream as the quintessential yin craving because it's cold, it's creamy, it's sweet. It's like, it's all those yin points. So right now, maybe you can do a little evaluation of what are you craving? What are, or maybe you're not, you don't feel like you're craving anything right now, but what are you experiencing in your body? You know, do you feel relaxed? Do you notice some tightness somewhere? Do you feel a little spacey? Do you feel ungrounded? You know, I, if you get too spacey and ungrounded, that's actually too yin. If you feel too, you feel totally anxious and wound up, that's definitely too, too young, you know, fluctuating there. Um, yeah, Celeste, plant-based foods, yes, uh, are, are going to be more yin. Uh, there's a spectrum. Um, so anything that's more concentrated, like a nut, right? A nut is going to be more young than a melon for sure. So for somebody who is solely plant-based, then you use your, like your nuts and maybe even like some of the denser legumes and stuff like that as your young balancing. Okay. Meat tends to be very young. So, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's very medicinal and, uh, and appropriate for, for certain people, but it's, it's like just really looking at that, that spectrum. Um, let's go into secret number three. I'm going to take a sip of water first. Um, and just uh, before I do that, just to, to tail into that, think of water content. That's really, that's really a great indication of, um, of, the spectrum of yin. So I use the example of melon. Melons are very wa high water content. I don't know what the percentage is, but watermelon's like 90% or something. Um, whereas a nut, it's not so high water content, right? Like um, a, a bean, certainly a dried bean. So that gives you, that gives you an idea. All right. Uh, yeah, Maria, so fish is going to be a little, fish is definitely more yin, that's a great question, than meat, but it's more young than, um, than, you know, plant-based foods. 
Uh, and it also depends on the fish. This can, we can go down a total rabbit hole, but um, you know, like salmon, higher fat content. And I even like, I geek out on this stuff, but, but if you think about a salmon, a salmon swims up river. It's like, unless it's farmed, right? But it's like, I'm gonna go swim, swim up the river. And you know, I mean, that's a hardcore activity that it does. So it's actually more young than like a whitefish. Anyway, little nuances. Um, I love this barometer and I even love to think about how, you know, what's the effect afterwards? How do I feel afterwards? So this requires some, some really tuning in, but that's what this is all about. I mean, if you're going to really get down into the nitty gritty of this, this is uh, an awareness practice. It's like a yoga practice with your body. It's like a, it's like a relationship. Um, all right. Secret number three is by what I call bio uniqueness. Okay. You have your own biology. This includes what is your blood type? What is your Ayurvedic dosha, which includes kind of like mind, body, spirit. So your, you know, the whole, the whole package, what is your Ayurvedic dosha? Um, which I do, uh, which I do with clients and, and some of my programs for sure. Uh, what's your gender? What's your activity level? Uh, what is your ancestry? That can be an interesting one, right? Like, you know, in your ancestry, did they even eat, I don't know, uh, potatoes? Maybe they had a lot of potatoes. So, so it's just kind of fun to kind of look at, look at that. Not, but any, the, any one of these things isn't going to uh, be the whole picture, okay? It's just things to kind of start to explore. What's your me metabolism like? What's your metabolic type like? Um, and then also like, what are any health issues that, you, that you're dealing with and certainly allergies and intolerances. Um, I, I have a couple of fun little like self-diagnostic techniques that you, you can use. Uh, you know, you can get tested and do all of that, but it, I, I think especially now, like I'm not inclined to go get lab testing unless I have to. Um, so why not have these assessments? I do, I actually have some nice assessments that I, that I do mostly with private clients, but it definitely in some of my programs, um, where you, you get to assess yourself and through that, they're pretty darn accurate because I've sort of compared that to some lab testing and, and then, then little self tests. So one simple one that I really love is pH, pH testing. Um, and these are just, we, I order these online, but um, you know, they have the little strips and it's a little litmus strip and these guys have the little tabs at the end and then you can test your saliva or you can test your first morning urine. Now, and then there's usually a chart on the back of, or that comes with the package that you get that tells you, you can usually pick these up at um, health food stores and things like that or online. But um, pH is great because things that affect your pH are gonna be foods that you eat and emotions, stressors, uh, sleep, exercise, environment, these all have an effect on your pH. So like if you didn't sleep well, you might wake up the next morning, test your first morning urine and see that you're more acidic. Generally a good range is like seven, I'm sorry, 6.2, I would even say 6.5 to 7.2 two is a nice range. So you don't want to be too alkaline. You don't necessarily want to be like going up into the, um, like the eight, this goes up to nine. So like 7.5 is good too. But beyond that, you're going almost too alkaline, much more, um, <laughs> what's the word I'm trying to, much more rare to have that, but it happens, but it's, it, it's, it's quite rare. Um, and it, likewise, if you had like a, 
stressful event happen, maybe the day before and you test your pH, especially the, the urine pH, um, you may see that it's more acidic too. And you go, oh, but I ate, you know, all these alkaline foods, all these greens, and I was hydrated and, you know, whatever. Um, and you can do your saliva as well, like after you eat something and see how it affected you. And you could do it right after, and you can also do it like, you know, maybe an hour afterwards. Um, you can also see like, if you had, if you're in a certain emotional state, just to kind of play, see how that affects you. So this is great because pH is huge and pH is an indicator like some blood types actually are gonna run a little more acidic and some blood types are gonna run more alkaline and um, naturally. And then some are gonna be more sensitive. Some people are just gonna be more sensitive to certain foods and how that affects their pH, likewise certain lifestyle factors as well. So it just gives you this ability to like get feedback, which is fun. I think it's fun. <laughs> Hopefully you do too. And you know, it's a great way to just get that feedback about your own body and how it's reacting. It's not about perfection. It's not about like reaching the state where you're like always 7.0 and like now you've reached, you know, pH nirvana or something. Um, but it allows you to customize. It allows you to get an idea overall. And I think it's empowering. Um, there's also a way that you can test your temperature. And I'll do that sometimes around like, do you have a food uh, allergy or a food intolerance? So you don't actually have to get the test. You can use temperature, which is, is pretty cool. Um, so something fun if you don't have pH strips would be to maybe pick those up. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna go into number four, which is what I called ditch diet dogma. Just like ditch the dogma, <laughs> DDD. No one else can truly know what's best for you nobody. There are some general guidelines that, you know, I really believe in. And I think everyone out there who is in this field or whatever that we can all agree on. And that would be eat more plants, more vegetables, fruits, colorful, naturally colorful foods, less processed, organic, fresh, whole, foods, and I would even say whole food fats, it's nuts, seeds, avocados, things like that. Um, so those would be like real generals, I think that everyone's going to agree on. But um, as far as how much fat do you need to eat? Do you need to eat more fat? Do you need to eat less fat? Do you need more carbs? Do you need less carbs? Do you need some animal protein? Do you need no animal protein? Uh, does that change for you? I know this can sound overwhelming and almost like too complex. That's why that's why I like the diet industry is such a huge industry because people want just like a concise answer. Now, I'm not saying that it's not possible to follow something and and have results, right? Like follow a trend for a little while. But I think the real, those, those real trends that, uh, especially when they, you know, keto is a great example. Um, you know, I mean, maybe doing something like that for a little while might provide some results, but I think it's ultimately about discovering what's right for you using some of these tips and tools that I'm sharing today, because that's really how you're going to learn to listen to your body and you're going to activate body wisdom, which is huge. Um, I feel like even though, you know, this might, you might see this as a, a diet dogma. Um, I see it as more of an opportunity to reset. I think cleansing, uh, like, like, a well-constructed cleanse or reset or detox um, is 
a really wonderful way to get some illumination because you're kind of paring down and simplifying. Um, you're creating space, you know, it's like, okay, this is what we're going to focus on. We're just going to do, you know, such and such. Usually when I lead my, um, my cleanses and my resets, I try to keep it simple. Like, here's what we're going to do. And this is different than what your ordinary life would be like, or, you know, but it's very simple so that you get a lens into, um, what's working, what's not. I always find that people have illumination. I continue to do that every time I've had, uh, I do my own cleanse and I just led a group in May and I plan to do another one in the fall. So stay tuned. Um, I'm excited for that. Uh, anyway, but it's just an informative way to connect with your body and to do something, you know, nurturing for it. And yeah, my answer to the question of like, do I think that everyone needs to do that? Yes, with the exception of pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and somebody that really has a health issue that would not be appropriate for something like that. And um, mm, 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 trying to think of what else. Uh, yeah, I might be missing something, but anyway, yes. Pretty much everybody else, even if you eat really healthy, like then it's, there's always something to learn and there's always something to reset. Um, yeah, and, and if you're having like kind of symptoms too, it's, it's super fascinating to find out what the triggers are and just watch that. So that's like itching the dogma, being your own um, physician. You know, like physicians are great and doctors are great and coaches and I mean, you know, I kind of fall into that realm, right? Like, but they're more, they're more to guide and support and, you know, and, and certainly offer some information, but ultimately, you know, you know what's best. Um, all right, number five is Here's where, here's where I'm going to be starting to integrate some of these newer aspects that I've been bringing in, which I found so um, illuminating, um, which is the uh, astrology, honestly, which sounds so, so random, but, um, but it's been really interesting. So number five is be aware of your innate blocks or your innate wounds. So this relates to an astrological um, aspect that I that I look at called Chiron. And um, you know, since I'm integrating more of this, it's been really fascinating to see how this um, plays into you know, just having the awareness of like, oh, that, that aspect lands in this part of my chart. And it's kind of like fast track therapy. Um, you know, anytime we start to have an awareness of a potential um, part of ourselves or how we react or how, you know, and it of course has to make sense. Like I'm not saying it's, it's the be all end all, but if it, if you kind of hear it and then you're like, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. Um, this Chiron deals with what they call the wounded healer, but it's it's basically um, like like a, a place that you maybe get stuck and are wounded. Um, you know, it could be around your body. It could be around speaking up for your needs. So I or just feeling comfortable in your skin. So once we kind of get an understanding of that, it's it's more easy, you, you, you're like, oh, I can see where these blocks might come up. And then it becomes easier. Again, I'm looking at it from the perspective of like, of how do we stay on track overall? How do we keep ourselves 
on the path. So that's going to be for sure your why, like number one, but then also being aware of where we get a little challenged and um, what might be that propensity of being challenged. And there's some other, you know, other parts and pieces that I like to look at too, but I found it really illuminating for myself and, um, and for clients that I've worked with. It's been fun. I'm going to go. So this is our lat, our last secret. I probably could have shared more than six, but I was, I was really wanting to go with, um, yeah, with number with six, if they'll somehow round to me. Um, number six is discover your unique emotional intelligence and motivation. Okay. So we all have a way that we emote, um, maybe the sensitivities, the different ways we might be emotionally sensitive, what I would call your a way of interacting emotionally, how you process emotions, and also how you stay motivated emotionally. Now in astrology, this relates to your moon. Um, so it's another little astrological nugget. Um, if you are not taking care of your emotions and your emotional personality and honoring them and understanding what you may need to stay emotionally motivated, then staying on track and really tuning into your body wisdom is going to be really difficult. Um, you know, it may be that you have uh, your moon, you know, when we're looking at it from this perspective and you can have, you know, you can have the ability to kind of already have an understanding of how you are emotionally. Um, maybe you think you're, you kind of try to think your emotions more, you're more intellectual about it. Maybe you're more fiery. Um, maybe you're more sensitive. You just really feel things deeply. Uh, perhaps, you're a little slower to um, just to process and move through things. Uh, maybe there's a practicality to how you deal with your emotions and um, or there's just like an unconventionality. You know, it's like easier for you to, to go through that and stay engaged if there's like something kind of different. Um, or that's more connected to the greater good. These are all different, you know, ways that when from the astrological standpoint, um, looking at your moon placement, you start to understand how do I take care of myself in this way, which, and, and, you know, and potentially even having an understanding of that starts to produce healing in your body, which is super cool because we're healing our emotional body. And I think a lot of you here probably watching this, get that, you know, get that emotional component to physical, physical health and what's showing up. Um, so I just love this because it just offers another lens, right? A different lens to who you are uniquely and um, and that's why it's just been fun to start to integrate this into uh, you know health coaching and I, you know I, all of this work. Um, so uh, I have I said I had some exciting something exciting to share, um, and I do because um, I'm doing I'm actually offering out. Uh, for for 25 lovely individuals who um, who are interested in this, I'm doing a body blueprint reading. And so this is the combination, right? And it's and it's at a special rate um, that I wanted to offer out to 25 people. Uh, normally, this would be $149. And I'm offering it out at 77. So it's pretty much like half price. And it's, um, this is a very, this is a unique session. I use your astrological birth chart, along with Ayurvedically based health and nutrition principles, 
to support you in a deeper understanding of how you relate to your body and how you relate to food. And then we can take that and customize a plan to best support your energy, vitality, health, and really empower your, what I see as empowering your life, um, which is really the most important thing. And empowering, uh, empowering your why, empowering what you uniquely, um, what lights you up, right? And, you know, in, in the session, it's about, you know, looking at what your body needs to heal and thrive, how to support and heal your innate wounds, like I said, around body, around food, around the self. Um, what are your personal, you know, what are your own personal motivators? How do you stick with your goals? Like, that's such a big one. I feel like I've worked with a lot of people. It's a big one. Um, how do you stay emotionally motivated and on track? You know, what I had talked about. And then, you know, types of foods, practices, and habits that could actually feed your best self and feed your path. Um, so yeah, this is all of what we look at. Uh, I would love to do this session for you. Like I am totally on fire about this. Um, and I'm going to give you a URL if you want to actually check it out and you can you can book it right there. You can also message me. You can also ask me questions. Um, you know, message me, messaging me on Facebook is great. But um, but also my email is Anna at yogabodynutrition.com. Um, but the URL to go there is it's a bit.ly link. I shortened it. So it's, you know, HTTPS, all that stuff. But it's B-I-T dot l y forward slash body 108 so it's bit dot l y forward slash body 108 <laughs> that's great oh, celeste i just saw your comment like fascinating stuff yeah yeah it's it is <laughs> like it totally is um so you know i I want to say that um, for me, this was like really sharing some potent parts of what I've utilized in my own life, because I think uh, a lot of people see me as very tuned in. Um, and so I'm trying to distill some of that down and uh, and then also what I've seen in working with with people and now just having this new lens is really fun. So I, you know, my hope and my intention is that what we went through today was supportive, even if it was like one little piece, you know, we went through six. There was a lot here, but even if there was one little piece that you said, yeah, that totally makes sense. And I'm going to do something with that. That will get you one step further to your, um, your blueprint, right? Like your, um, your customization of your diet, but also what you need to take care of yourself. And and then if you really do want some further support and some further insight, I would highly recommend uh, taking me up <laughs> on the body blueprint reading. Um, again, I wanna make that available to 25 people at that, um, at that special price. Um, and if it doesn't speak to you, I totally get that as well, but it would be a pleasure to do it. So, um, yeah, kind of reaching the, the top of the hour and I would love to see, you know, I've seen some of your comments of those of you who are here live. So I'm just gonna offer out if you wanna type in, if there's a question or a comment or something you wanna share, maybe an insight. I always love hearing about that. Um, then I open it up. It's kind of interesting for me doing this format because um, I'm used to engage, like where I can hear somebody 
I guess for the most part, but, uh, but typing in works very well. Uh, so do just type in, like I said, a question, a, a thought, um, an insight, something that spoke to you. I love hearing that. So, <laughs> sounds good, great. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Looks like we don't have any questions, any burning questions right now. Or uh, I saw your little, I saw your little note. Yeah. Um, what I want to leave you with is tune in to what sticks out for you and then just play with that for the next week. See how you see how that supports you in the next week. Um, and then you can, you know, take it a step further and maybe try on the next little insight that you had. Um, yeah. And that that said, I'm going to wrap things up. And ah, OK, I see a comment that I'll that I'll share. Thanks. Thank you, Maria. That yeah, that you that you had. Um, that it was really an amazing experience for you in the last reset that we did in May because you still have no sugar cravings, which huge, right? Like that, and that's where I see the value in something like that. So thank you for sharing. Love having you all here. Um, I really do. It's, it's a special time for us to get together and just support each other. Um, so anyway, that said, I'm going to sign off and um, and I'll get in touch with any of you who have who will or have already reached out about the body blueprint reading and uh, I look forward to doing that it's it's just a, a wonderful opportunity so much love talk to everybody very soon or type to everybody very soon and I will plan on doing another live next week. I'm going to try to keep this consistent um, and most likely not on Wednesday, but I will choose another day once I have a better idea. All right. Bye. See you soon.